here in Shizuoka. I just happened to meet my former student, Sean Allen. Sean returned here for the job conference, but he has lived in Japan. He was my former student. How many years ago did you study Japanese, Sean? Uh, I think I was your student starting in uh, fall of 2004, so 14 years ago. And how many years of Japanese did you have at UAF? I took three full years consecutively um, before I graduated in 2007. And then what did you do? I got accepted to the JET program and I went to Niigata Prefecture in the city of Murakami where I was there. I was there for a year. A year. And then after that? After that I had the chance to move up to Hokkaido to t work and live in my sister city, my, my hometown of Palmer's sister city, Soroma. Soroma. A Soroma. And how did you like your experiences through those, all those years? Oh, well, I stayed in Saroma for six years, wow, so I liked years. it. Um, you know, small towns, small schools, uh, great kids, really uh, excellent <laughs> teachers I got to work with. I, I made a little place for myself there for six years and, and really got a lot out of it. So your Japanese now is pretty fluent as far as getting around and everything? Nihongo wa nichijo no toki ni. Daijoubu desu ne. And after that, what, you went, you returned to Alaska? Yes, uh, in, I ended my contract, my work in Saroma in the end of 2014. Uh -huh. And I moved back to Alaska, I uh, got a job at, in Fairbanks, back at UAF. Uh -huh. I work for UAF eCampus, doing course design, online courses, working with faculty. Uh, I teach as an adjunct now online. Oh, wow. Really? So, yeah. Yeah. And, you, and I hear your wife is from Japan? She is. She's from Furano in Hokkaido. Um, she's a dosanko. And oh, yeah. yeah. And how did you meet her when you were in Saroma? Uh, yes, up in Saroma. I, we met at a friend's, mutual friend's piano recital in Mombets. She was working and teaching in Mombets. She's an English teacher. So how has Japan affected your life? <sighs> well, I, it feels like I have one foot in each country at all times. Uh, and sometimes that's... Um, complicated, but I, I think I, my life is enriched by it. I have a daughter now who's two, and I think a lot about how I can give her the skills and tools to be basically bicultural. Right. Um, I think that's probably more important than being bilingual, actually, as I think that has to come first. Oh, um, uh, so it, it's definitely affected my life. I think it's made me more better at working with other people, maybe a little bit more patient. What was the biggest challenge for you when you were living in Japan? Oh, probably just being the only white guy in a small town. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> I'd go shopping in the next city over, or, uh, you know, just, and I, I got used to that, but it was definitely, here, here we go. There it goes. Woo! The oh, I love it. I'm like a little bait, like a little kid, like a little six year old uh -huh. thinking about like that and Meronpan and some, some Mitsuya cider. I'm set. Uh, <laughs> that's one thing I missed about living in Hokkaido is you got to go. Well, you, Hakodate has the Shinkansen now, but you had to go b down to Honshu to, to enjoy that. So, um, yeah. And so your biggest challenge is being the only white foreigner in that area. Everybody's staring at you. I didn't know. You. you know, I, that really wasn't a challenge. You, you, get, you, you have to live with that. You yeah. get used to that. Um, I think the biggest challenge was probably uh, trying to find um, your place as a, I was at ALT, mm -hmm. trying to be effective and feel like you're meant to be there and that you're doing right by the students and that you're, you're, you're not just kind of filling up some shoes or warming a seat. Were you successful after what, six years? <sighs> I think so. I don't think I would have stayed for six years if I didn't think I was doing something right. Um, and I tried a lot of new things. I think it made me realize how, um, uh, how tough teaching is, especially if you're some kind of person who gets maybe bored easily with, with what you've done. I was kind of constantly rewriting and redesigning lessons even though no one asked me to and no one wanted me to. So um, uh, yeah, I'd have a lot more respect for especially Japanese classroom teachers now um, and the Japanese education system. I, I, if, if it works out, I'd love for my daughter to go to especially a rural Japanese school. I mean, I could think of the one in Hokkaido that I'd want her to go to. Um, small school, uh, kids have to learn to get along with one another. Um, you know, they're kind of like family. The teachers and the kids really know one another. I think that's really, I mean, where else can you get that? So. Kind of a rural, smaller area of school in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what were the best things about Japan? Or what did you really enjoy while you were living here? Uh, High-speed internet. Uh, yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, uh, really high quality food. Uh, no tipping. <laughs> That's, that sounds a little bit uh, uh, kitsch, but um, ooh, another Shinkansen is coming. But okay. I think it's pulling in. We're, we're going to get okay. it right here. Okay. Um, I I enjoyed just the kind of the, the the responsibility that people take for their surroundings. Um, I know that's not always the case. Yeah, you see dirty streets and trash and this and there, but um, be, you know, cleaning up after oneself and. Ooh. <laughs> Awesome. Um, uh, yeah, just the, the sense of, um, uh, I think it, it, Americans don't have a sense of that, like what we do, where we live has an effect on us because we, there's always like more land to expand into and we don't have to think of a lot about how, like this is the only place we're going to ever be. And the Japanese, they've been thinking about that for, you know, a thousand years. Especially um, being from Alaska, you know. Yeah, especially being from Alaska. And you know, in Hokkaido, there's a bit more of that Alaska mindset of like, we're kind of off in the frontier, and, um, but people still, uh, there's a, you know, it's, and that's built into the culture, I think. Yeah. What do you miss when you're in Alaska about Japan? Oh, onsens. Onsen. The bathing, just the bathing culture. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I really miss that. I just sometimes like, oh, I want to go to an onsen. That's all I really want. And you know, we have Chino Hot Springs in Fairbanks, but right. it's not not really the same thing. Right, right. Um, yeah. yeah, very different. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna pretty much live in Alaska for now, pretty much for a while now. Uh, next couple of years at least. I really like my job, the university. You know, it's kind of in this transition period. Um, but I think that there's still some interesting things for me to do in Alaska. Uh, we'll see. We definitely have roots back in Hokkaido and maybe some opportunities here. Um, but I really do think if I ever move back to Japan, it's, it'll be Hokkaido and nowhere else. And how is your wife adjusting in Alaska? She loves it. Oh, really? Yeah. Despite she, the cold, the darkness? Uh, nope. Uh, she loves cross-country skiing on the trails oh. around, around the city. Um, yeah. Our daughter has skis now. Yeah. Um, it's kind of how we beat the winter blues is just getting on skis and getting an hour or so of, of good kind of aerobic exercise. Wow. Lastly, is there any like message you have for people who may be thinking of coming to live in Japan in the future or maybe being an ALT yeah. or any kind of little message? I just say be patient and um, don't, I, I think I kind of tend to be very self-conscious because I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, this, I'm a foreigner here. I have to be, oh, here comes another one. All right, I'm just going to watch this go past. Here it comes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here it goes. Oh, yeah. That must oh. be the Nozomi. We're not, I'm not going to ride that one. I'm getting on the Hikari <laughs> here in about 20 minutes. Um, I, I think that um, being... Mm, what's the right word? Patient, but also like, so I, uh, I used to tell these exchange students from Alaska who are coming to Japan, just, you know, reminding them that like they're kind of the ambassador for their entire culture, whether they want to be or not. Um, and I think some people are like, oh, I don't, oh, I don't care what anyone thinks of me. And like, I think that you kind of have to care what people think of you in Japan, not, not like, to, you know, work yourself into a debilitating rack of inaction, but just think about how like, being polite and, and adhering to cultural norms here really makes it, it's going to help you. It's going to help you make friends and, and feel like you're more accepted here. Um, and I kind of embrace the cultural norms here. You know, don't talk on the phone on your on the train. You know, don't throw trash on the like basic basic stuff. So yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I know that's really small, but it's just a, it's a small kind of daily action that we can take. Um, and just being uh, being considerate of others. That's really I think that's what it boils down to. Others, yeah, oh, that's just a regular train. Okay, whatever. Well, you are also really one of my best students, and, and you know, you are also a sensitive person, so you know, I, I can see where Japan fits, fits you and you fit in Japan. I think it does fit with my personality. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're not like, yeah, like, you know, more like, you know, you're very calm. Right. You're very um, sensitive. And, thank you. But anyway, thank you very much. I see your, is that your train coming in right now then? No, I think this is the this is the one going to Nagoya. Mine is okay, the next, the next one. one. So, yeah. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much, Sean. Have a good trip back. You're going to Takamatsu just to venture out. Yep. Flying out of Takamatsu back to Alaska on Tuesday. So Woo. smooth. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Yeah.